Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very special guest. This is Keely from Vampire Keely. She has come to visit me all the way in Boston and we are going to do a book recommendation tag um, that was originally created I think by Steph Borer and we're just going to answer the questions together. Alright, so I'll ask you and then I will answer. Oh gosh, I'm nervous. You'll yeah, do great. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a book you tell people is your favorite. Oh. <laughs> Why is the first thing coming to mind Twilight? <laughs> because you probably do tell people that's your favorite book. Probably. Either Twilight or Harry Potter, like as a series and as a whole. Mm -hmm. But Twilight. Okay, Twilight. <laughs> For me, I feel like I'm pretty well known. For having Sorcery of Thorns is my favorite book. Yes. It magical library, like it's just the vibe. Still need to read that one. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that is what I tell people is my favorite, and I feel like hopefully people associate me with that book. I do. Okay. A book that is your guilty pleasure. Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine we go down the list. Every, Every answer, answer is Twilight. Twilight. Um, guilty pleasure. There's literally nothing else that can fit. For Twilight, but other than Twilight. Okay, so stick with Twilight. Yeah, because I'm yeah. like, well, I guess I see a book. Hold on. A Curse of Dark and Lonely. Oh. I feel like I did not expect to like this one, and I read it last year, and it's just like, a lot of people don't have like the best things to say about the series as a whole, I've heard. Yeah, I love this And I've read only the first one, mm -hmm. and I fell completely obsessed. So I guess if I'm not going with Twilight, I guess I'll go with this. So for me, a guilty pleasure to me is not something that I actually feel guilty about, but yeah. it's like a, a, like a snacky little morsel that mm -hmm. I was addicted to. And for me, my latest guilty pleasure is the <laughs> Clisanian series by Victoria Aveline, which is an alien romance series. So it's Ice Planet Barbarians-esque, except so these girls like get kidnapped for, by like evil aliens then end up on this planet and it's like ice planet barbarians but it's like a more advanced civilization um but it's a matriarchal society and all of the men have to go to husband school to learn how to be good husbands. iconic <laughs> and it's yeah. so fun so that's my guilty pleasure. yeah i feel like guilty pleasure is such a weird term because i don't feel guilty for anything i read yeah i will tell you you already know twilight is my favorite so yeah. <laughs> okay a book everyone loved, but you didn't. Oh, here we go. Yeah. I have so many yeah. of these. Um, I'm looking at one right now on the shelves. Um, Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Maas. Literally the entire, or not the entire series. I love, hold up the first I one. love Throne of Glass. Love the first book, love the second book, and I love Assassin's Blade. When Rowan is introduced, <laughs> I want to die. Um, and Empire of Storms was one of my worst books of last year, as well as The Cruel Prince. So I have unpopular you, opinions. You I really have unpopular opinions. Um, and I have a, like a visceral hatred for them too. So <laughs> I think mine would probably be The Gilded Wolves. I feel like that's one of the only like popular mm. books that I like actually really didn't like. And the thing, it was just like one particular thing about the story that really threw me out. Like I feel like people are like, oh, like it's like Six of Crows, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, like not every heist story is like Six of Crows. That's also another That's another one. one. I hate Six of Crows. <laughs> um... But it was like the the magic system was trying mm -hmm. too hard to be based in real science, and then it didn't line up with real science, and mm -hmm. that is a personal and she's a STEM girl. Personal preference. That's by her. Roshni Chakshi, right? Yeah, but I'm like, I, I, like her writing was fine, like everything else about it was fine. I, I just couldn't. Do I read it. one book by her and didn't like it because of the writing. So mm -hmm. yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. A book you read the fastest. There's a lot. I feel like most recently I did a vlog about extreme horror books mm -hmm. and I read three of them in two days. So like I flew through those things. So that's like the most recent yeah. book that I read the fastest. So in my like memory of like a book that stands out as being the fastest because I'm sure I can read through some books like fast like a chunky book mm -hmm. is the day that Breaking Dawn came out. I sat on my couch and read it in like one sitting. Like that's I impressive. don't even know if I maybe I'd pee about it. <laughs> that's so I impressive didn't move besides I that, love that until I finished. I love that. Um, another book that I did that with is um, Leon Mor Mortieri. Uh, Moriarty. Yeah. Moriarty. It's like the one with the lollipop on the cover. Yeah. I like remember I got home from like a test in college and it was like it was so hard and I was just like so dead and I just like sat on the couch 
and read the book. I didn't even get up to pee, and I read it for five hours. Wow. And I just zoned out. I, like, dissociated and Love that. Book, so. Love that. Oh, Big Little Eyes, I think. Oh, that that's, the like, the, the TV famous show. one. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. the popular one. Okay. Um, a book that deserves more hype. I'm going to go with my top book of last year, which was The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. It's like a post-apocalyptic story, but it's 20 years after the apocalypse happened. So, so these characters, this is the only world they know, and it has some gruesome parts, but also like coming of age parts and mystery, and there's like a whole lot packed into it, and I've never seen a single other person read it except for me. So I, I, should, I don't know if anyone else like Yeah. Okay. So I just thought of my answer while you're talking. Perfect. And my answer is Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. I feel like her other books are more popular. Mm -hmm. Her Daughter of the Pirate King and The Shadows oh, yeah. Between Us are her more popular ones. This one is underrated and it's about, it's like a Viking fantasy one and there's like some cool creatures in here. Viking inspired. She gets exiled from her clan. I love the covers of her yeah. books. Yeah. Yeah, so then she gets to, like, banished the wilderness to, like, complete a task, and she, like, meets up with other banished Vikings in there, and if you like Viking YA books, I think you would really enjoy this. It was so good. And it's not good. I feel like I haven't read any other, like, really Viking fantasies, besides yeah. the one Adrian oh, yeah. Young one as well. Oh, yeah. I like yeah, I haven't read any Vikings. But I do, I do really like Vikings, so I feel like I, her whole backlist with that book in particular is the most, like, slept on of all of her books. Um, that's true. I feel yeah. that. A book that is becoming a movie slash TV show. Um, what is becoming a movie TV show? <laughs> I, don't I know. so I'm weird about like adaptations because I don't particularly particularly like to watch them because if you mess up, like it offends me. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying to think. I know there's like so many coming out recently, mm -hmm. but a lot of the books like I haven't read. So because I know a lot of like Taylor Jenkins read stuff, but I haven't read any of yeah. her books and I don't know if I will mm -hmm. um so I don't know if I have an answer for this because I can't think of anything yeah I don't read. have anything that's like coming out I guess like we could go I could go with like the basic answer which is that mm -hmm. A Court of Thorns and Roses was optioned for TV but that happened like forever ago so many books have been we optioned. like really don't have that much more information oh yeah, yeah. I forgot I have like page overlays Ooh, that's pretty um so, like, you know, when eventually that happens, I will One be tuning day. in just to see what happens. But that's yeah. really all I have. A book you have reread the most? Mm, probably the Harry Potter series. Yeah. Um, or actually, The Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. Because I started reading The Hunger Games before the movies came out, and I've read it every year since then. So I don't know how many years that's been. Like, 10 plus rereads, maybe, for some of them. Yeah. So it's probably The Hunger Games. Yeah. I don't know, because I didn't obviously keep track when I was a kid of, like, Harry Potter and the Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. But, like, I didn't own that many books. I just reread the books that I had over and over. Oh, wow. Since I started doing, like, booktube and reading as an adult, I would say the book that I probably reread the most is Fairyborn, I think. Ugh. This is, like, literally one of my favorite series of all time. Um, it's, like, so underhyped. And I read it when it came out, I read it when the sequel came out, and then I read it when the third book came out. So I've read it three times. Um, and well, I have read Kingdom of the Wicked three times as well. But oh, yeah. I'm gonna go just with this one because I did it first. Read that but one. yeah, this is really cool. It's dual timeline about two women that have like all seven elemental powers and they're super powerful and like very good. Very good. Nice. And it's all tapped up. It is. <laughs> one of my faves, and I literally will never shut up about it. So. Actually, I was thinking about rereading it. I was like, mm, oh, so. yeah. I need to read it. She has a new book coming out too. I have an arc of it. I just have not mm. read it yet. But Fancy. I will soon because it's around the time of the release date. Okay. A book from a genre you don't typically read. Oh, that's hard because I read pretty much every genre. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I'll go with like non-fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorites of all time is Unbroken by Laura Hildebrand. It's about an Olympic runner who was also in the war. I can't remember what war. World <laughs> War II probably. That's like the popular one. Um, but he was also in the Olympics and was just an avid runner in his story because he was also a prisoner of war. Um, and so everything he accomplished. So I would say non-fiction because I don't read it the most, but that is a book that like has stuck with me since I read yeah. it. I would say mine is also nonfiction, and the nonfiction book that really sticks with me the most is The um, Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, mm. because she was um, 
a black woman in the 1950s that come, came from a very like poor family and she was hospitalized for ovarian cancer mm -hmm. and from her cells they were able to make the first immortal cell line and it's still being used like in research and industry today and I am a, I think anyone that like works in a lab with cells should read that book to like mm -hmm. understand the implications of the ethics of medicine and using tissue from people and obviously there were no laws around it at the time mm -hmm. and now there are more laws but it's definitely really interesting to see like how like her cells have literally like shaped a generation of medicine and her family still like really is yeah. living in poverty so. yeah she didn't get like any credit from her or from that and mm -hmm. they like stole it from her without permission yeah, and she saved like countless lives because of mm -hmm. that so okay a book that deserves all the hype it gets hmm this is awkward for me because a lot of the hyped books i hate so I'm trying to think. Maybe I'm trying to like look at your shelves. Carvel? Um, like yeah. Last one. I was gonna say yeah. With Carvel, I didn't really enjoy the first one, but I enjoyed the last one. So like that one's hard too. Mm -hmm. Um, I see on the bottom of her shelves Illuminae, and I feel like Illuminae was a really hyped series a few years ago, and yeah. I think that one like it was so it's so cool. Really, it's up. very well like multimedia yes. done in like a very cool way and i've never like no seen another book done like that about it yeah and like the way it's made is just so good and the story itself yeah. is it was so good and when it was hyped i was like okay how good can it really be and i really loved it here it is yeah so i think that the design of the the book itself is like really cool because mm -hmm. it's like all like supposed to be like futuristic files and it has yeah. this like clear plastic cover um and then like if you look like it like looks it's like light logs like it looks futuristic like as a I book know. it has like maps and yeah. like it it was one of the coolest reading experiences ever i actually really love this series yeah so. so definitely worth the hype mm. for me i like everything pretty much that i read so i would say from blood nash by Jeffrey l armentrout um Especially this first book, I still think is the strongest book in the series, just setting up the world. And like, I love Poppy and Cass, and I think it's just like, it's really brought a lot of attention to the fantasy romance genre and kind mm -hmm. of has made the genre explode. And I appreciate it for that, and I just yeah. thoroughly enjoy the series, even though some of the books I like more than others, mm -hmm. I still really like the series, really care for these characters, and I'm interested to see where it's gonna go. Yeah, I love the first one, but I have since DNF the series, so. Oh, you're not continuing on with the series? No. Okay, <clears throat> a book you usually recommend when asked to give a recommendation. I feel like this one depends too, because I always, when people ask me, I always ask the question, well, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Are you looking for fantasy, contemporary, things like that? Um, I feel like the one that I give a lot of recommendations for is actually Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Um, that one is often hit or miss with people, but I feel like it's one of those that was kind of hyped, but I also have seen a lot of people haven't read it. And it's a really unique story uh, with the old pictures that are intertwined throughout the story that Ransom found at like charity shops and he like wrote the story around the pictures and the kids have like different powers and the whole story, the way it comes together is really incredible. And that series is like so special to me. So I'm always like, if you're looking for something different and interesting, that's a good series to go to. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do for this one. That's a good um, answer. If you just like want to get into like the fantasy, why a fantasy genre, even though this is kind of like sci-fi fantasy, I think this is just like such a good staple and it's easily relatable because it's based on stories that we all know mm -hmm. and that is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I feel like it's such a YA classic. It's mm -hmm. about a girl, it's like a Cinderella retelling but she's a cyborg and this series is so fun and it was like huge when it first came out and I just think it's like such a great YA book and definitely like if you want to get started in the genre especially with like mm -hmm. the classics this is a good place to go. Yeah that also would have worked for books I reread. I just started my third reread this oh, morning. third? Yeah. Wow. I haven't read her of the series yet. I want to Me read either. it. A book that has your favorite characters. Mmm. The first thing that comes to mind is the Moral Instruments. Yeah. Like the original City of Bones series, like those characters, every time I read another Shadowhunter book and I see the original characters, my heart just fills with so much love. And the other, like, Cassie Clare <coughs> books just can't compare to those characters for me. Like you put Magnus Bane on page and I'm gonna be obsessed. Like, that's it. Um, it's funny that you say that because for me, my answer, sorry, I'm like walking around like dog. So my like favorite book character ever is Tessa Gray from the Infernal Devices. I just think 
I don't necessarily see myself like I see pieces of myself in some book characters but in terms of like my actual personality I feel like she is the closest that I've read in all of my books to me so she's like pretty special to me and obviously Will and Jem I love them too so yes, just agree. in terms of like a character that I like really relate mm -hmm. to and I love it's Miss yes. Tessa Gray. The series Immortal Instruments that's definitely good. Book you wish you could live in? Oh. I don't want to give a basic answer because I have like a, a typical answer that's super basic. So I'm like trying to think of mm -hmm. something that's not basic. Hmm. Our shelves are so different. <laughs> I know. Because you have a lot of fantasy and I don't really like fantasy. I don't know. Maybe st Stalking Jack the Ripper. Does that sound weird? Because like 1800s, London. 1800s London, but also like solving crimes and like autopsies. That's like what I would love to do. So that would be awesome. And also hunting down Jack the Ripper. Like, that that sounds like a good answer yeah. for me. I feel like a lot of these books are filled with strife, so I'd yeah. like to find one where like it's kind of like chill in the world. Yeah. So for me, A Darker Shade of Magic, I would love to live in Red London um, because that's like the London that has all the magic and it's like pretty cool there. And I love this book and I think that would be a pretty cool place to live. Like, to when, there, when there's not conflict though. Yeah, of course. You need to read it because the follow-up series is coming out. It's interesting though because talking to Jack the Ripper, yeah, there's conflict, but it's conflict I would still want to be in. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, like I, finding a murderer. Audrey Rose is definitely the other book character that I relate a lot yes, to. Yes, I can yeah. see that. Book you thought you would hate but ended up loving? Um, I wouldn't say loving, but liked Tower of Dawn in mm -hmm. the Throne of Glass series. Because as I mentioned, I hate the second half of the series. And I had just given Empire of Storms one star. But I had high hopes for Tower of Dawn because Kale's in it. And Kale's the only character that's worth my time. And so I did like Tower of Dawn. So that kind of surprised me because of how much I hate the other books. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay. you thought you would hate but ended up loving. Um, oh god. I like really like don't. I really go into, go into most books, books yeah. thinking I'm going to love them, and then I love them. Couldn't be me. Oh, okay. I, I know what I'm going to do. Not that I thought I would hate this book, but Ice Planet Barbarians definitely <laughs> took me by surprise. Because I'm like, it's an alien romance. I'm mm -hmm. not going to like that. And then here I am collecting the picture of the show. <laughs> because it's just like so, so... pretty, too. They're pretty. It's like so fun and like cute. And like it's, it's like cuter than you think it would be. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just enjoy it, so... I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Um, a book that made you cry. Oh, I feel like I can cry a lot. Um, I'm gonna go with the like cliche answer, Clockwork Princess. Yeah, like that, that was a tough one. Cause that's the one I feel like that's standard. Like so, I remember crying. I actually like. I feel like I cry more when I listen to audiobooks because something about it yes. just makes me tear up. But like a physical book reading experience. <laughs> I don't want to get it. Okay, I'm just going to point to it. Kingsbane in the Furyborn series, which not to answer in the same book twice, <laughs> but this book had a plot twist that shocked me and upset me so much that I cried tears. Oh no. And like that, I've never cried over a plot twist, but I was so upset by this yeah. plot twist. Like I was so deep into loving this book and then I cried. Okay, so the last question is a book you wish you could read again for the first time. And I'm going to go with The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. This book I've read twice, I believe, and each time it gets me so hard. The plot twist in here is really, really good. I love the characters. I love the world. And it's probably my favorite fantasy series, and if not, top two for sure. I do really want to read that soon. So I'm going to go with Red, the Red Queen series. So I've read this series, I think, like mostly twice, and... I actually don't know if the series would like hold up now, but it holds like such a nostalgic place mm -hmm. in my heart because like when I graduated college and I was just getting, I think I read this like my senior year of college, and I was just getting back into YA like after not being a teenager anymore. This mm -hmm. was like the first book that I read and I was like addicted. I was like, this is the best thing ever. Like I have been missing out on these kinds of stories by not reading for years mm -hmm. while I was like doing school. And so I just like really... Like, I, that spark, that, like, feeling of, like, being addicted to a book mm -hmm. and not being able to put it down, like, this was the book that made me feel that for the first time in years, and so I would love to, like, go back and recapture that feeling. Yes. I get that with a lot of series. Bye. All right, so that was the tag. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Please go follow Keely. I'll link all of her 
socials down below. It was so much fun to film a video together yes. and have some fun, read some books. So I'll catch you guys in the next one.